This is uh, Lawrence Jones on Fox and Friends. Is he? He is the Fox and Friends host, right? Now is he like? What's happening? What's happening with Fox? The first off the bench, I would say at this point. Uh, is, is something going on there that we should know about? Like, is Ducey getting squeezed out? Ducey, uh, Ducey, not committed to hard work. You know, he's he's taking a. It three feels like there's something. Good. There's some turmoil there. Like, but I'm I mean, I think you were Will accurate. Kane on there more. And... You accurately pointed out that Ducey has been kind of, uh, you know, hedging in terms of a lot of the standard Fox talking points. He's he's been he's been uh, he's been sort of drifting out of his lane a little bit. Um, but here is um, here is uh, Lawrence Jones one of the Fox and friends um, apparently finding out for the first time that the modern Republican party had some issues about race. Oh. Until we offered the community a choice, Republican leadership in the community to say, look, we are, st we stand for equal justice under law. We do want, we do care about your kids, but we also care about the police as well. We care about right. bringing people together. But if you don't offer people a choice, I mean, it was just disgusting seeing Joe Biden being the guy to honor Black Wall Street yesterday, uh, yesterday when it should have been Republicans leading the way. The people, houses that were torched, the businesses that were burned, those were Republican people. And we should have been out there and out there for the public saying, we stand with you. We want to rebuild it. It's like somebody told the past administration, maybe if you show up to Black Wall Street and say, look, I'm a builder. I'm going to rebuild this community. But they didn't do it. So Joe Biden got the victory yesterday. 1920. And if you look 100 years. Now, uh, to be fair, um, I would imagine that um, those black people in uh, Tulsa in 1920 were Republicans. The Republican Party, um, you know, uh, changed dramatically in the subsequent 40, uh, 50 years, actually, uh, from that time. And um, so he was right. And there was a huge opportunity there. And Joe Biden, not necessarily the, you know, uh, at least for most of his career, not exactly the guy out there marching, uh, you know, like uh, waving the civil rights flags. But you got to ask yourself, why? Yeah. Why didn't that? Why didn't that Republican last Republican leadership just grab that low hanging fruit there? You got to ask yourself why at one point. Matt, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say all those opportunities, all these years, they could have just done that. And they didn't say, oh, those are Republicans. Yeah, it's really weird. I wonder why that didn't happen. They've been like spending all their time just trying to get people to remember that Martin Luther King Jr. might have been or would have been a Republican today. You know, that's what they got to do one black person at a time. You know, they got to introduce one black historical figure to the Republican Party at a time. So, you know, they're still working on MLK. Once they move back a little bit, they can, you know, get to the Tulsa massacre. And, and to be fair, super hard to talk about Obama's cell phone slush fund uh in one breath and then also talk about the tulsa massacre in the other this just like continued obsession with trying to paint republicans as the people pushing for racial justice because they decide to ignore that the party switched allegiances um some few decades after the uh the tulsa massacre um is a really frustrating exercise and they continue to do it every single time they talk about this they obscure the, the issue and there's really obviously no pushback on fox news it's such an easily disprovable lie i mean it, it's like saying like you know the dodgers used to be in brooklyn um so why why is los angeles embracing the dodgers right but no they switched at one point they were in brooklyn and now they're in los angeles so it's not like things remained as they were well, that what, long ago. What I find interesting is that that Lawrence Jones guy seems really upset. Like, I mean, he seems to be genuinely upset uh, and it's surprised. It's a performance. Do you think it's like, but, but he, but, but I don't, I don't know why. I mean, but he seems to be admonishing the Republican party. And it's like, dude, are you not aware of what's been going on? Is, he, is that what he's doing? Isn't he? I don't know. <laughs> I think some people literally believe that, you know, black liberation through capitalism is best achieved through Republican Party. I have no idea why they would believe that. 
Um, maybe because they happen to be in a higher tax bracket than others. I don't know what this uh, Lawrence fellow does. Nice suit jacket. So, you know, maybe something, you know, expensive. Uh, and so I think it can make sense. But also, I think it's important to realize that a lot of these performances are not for like black people to convince them, but for like white people to feel better about their support of the Republican Party and that they're not racist for doing so because they provide them these opportunities like being on Fox and Friends to like, you know, explain to them the history of the Tulsa massacre. Right, right. And and I guess to a certain extent, his um, his his frustration implies that the Republicans just missed an opportunity as opposed to like they ran away from that opportunity. Or I, I think I, I'm sure that there are a lot of black people and women within the Republican Party and gay people in the Republican Party who feel like their uh, mobility within the Republican Party's ranks are entirely uh, curtailed by not only the racism, but the lack of, I would say, you know, the missing of these opportunities to enforce the fact that there is more value in having these kinds of like token figures in these positions to say things like this. And so I think there is also just like a particularly craven desire for the Republican Party to embrace a level of tokenism that is, you know, alien to the way they raise money from their base, I think. Well, there's no, I mean, Lawrence just like can't understand that it's because they're racist, dude. That's why they didn't embrace it. I mean, like, you know, it, we're just talking around the, the big, you know, anti-black elephant ha in the room. Ha Hockham's razor. Yeah. Not even that they are just racist too, but like that, even if they're not particularly racist, that's a big part of their brand. It's just like, you know, maybe Lawrence knows a lot of like white Republican upper officials who aren't personally racist or he feels like they aren't, but you got, that's how they make their money. Well, so, got, you know, like, well, that's the he point. He got invited to their cocktail parties, so it must mean that they're not racist. They, exactly. Racist, but they're selling to racists. And that's yeah. the problem. You've got to deliver least, the product. But they're also racist.